once just sandwiched between Grandstand and the Generation Game. Tonight on BBC Two, you get a whole night to hide behind the sofa. Good evening. I've been expecting you. Ah, there you are. I'm so glad you're back. It's been such a long time. Well, it seems like a long time ago. Anyway, an awful lot of things have happened while you've been away. You know, <laughs> I was just thinking of Cleopatra. What a woman. Oh, or was it Helen of Troy? She was a woman too. <laughs> oh, so long ago. What about the doctor? Yes. He must be getting on a bit. 700 years old. Two hearts, though. I knew him very well, you know. So did you. That's why we're here, isn't it? This is a night with Doctor Who on BBC Two. Allow me to present my good friend, the Doctor. He lives such a long and varied life. Of course, he's not everybody's cup of tea. He always finds trouble. That's just one of his qualities. Yes? Hello. Can I help you? Yes, um... <clears throat> I'm... I, I'm bad. What about the Daleks? They had a different kettle of fish. <laughs> no! It's Doctor Who Night on BBC Two. So where shall we go first? Ah. You're watching A Night with Doctor Who. Hold on. I'll be back in no time. Test your knowledge against the master. For cool quizzes, downloads and Dalek pictures, visit the official Doctor Who website at www.bbc.co.uk slash Doctor Who. They're hip, they're happening, they're hairy. I know Jill would be very impressed with my new beard. She's promised to have sex with me for the first time in ages when she comes back from Wales. So, uh, you know, forgotten what it's like. It's been such a long time. <laughs> well, there's a lot of interesting scenery, but a notable hostility to outsiders. Hippies. Friday at 9.30 on BBC Two. So glad you could stay. This is Doctor Who on BBC Two. In a moment, time to hide your eyes. It's the Carnival of Monsters. Then, Open your eyes. Where have you brought me to this time, old girl? Woo! It's the pathetic uh, aliens. Oh. Uh, Want to get away from it all? Build yourself a TARDIS. Get back! And run for your life. The Daleks are coming. It takes all sorts to make a universe. One or two of my best friends were human. As for Daleks, Cybermen, Zygons. Dreadful. Dreadful. Between you and me, we couldn't live without them. No, no, no. What a great time we're having with Doctor Who on BBC Two. You know, some monsters really are more scary than other monsters. Exterminate! Annihilate! Destroy! It's Doctor Who Night on BBC Two.
was always getting into trouble. But the one thing he would always rely on to save him was this, the TARDIS. Now, it may look like an old-fashioned London police box to you, but as a physicist, what intrigues me is that it's a very sophisticated space-time machine. It looked like a London police box because of a clever ability common to all time machines built on Gallifrey. One of its functions is that it can change shape to blend perfectly with the surrounding environment. Unfortunately, this TARDIS wasn't working properly. So the chameleon circuit stuck. Exactly. In Totter's yard. Yeah, in our Totter's yard. You know, it was ages ago, it doesn't matter. She was in on Gallifrey for repair when I bought her out. Scientifically, the idea of a chameleon circuit was, of course, way ahead of its time. Materials that could behave like a chameleon and change their shape and colour to fit in with their surroundings weren't even on the drawing board in the 1960s. It's only now with the new science of nanotechnology, in which we hope to build things molecule by molecule, that it becomes even conceivable to speculate about it. There are two possibilities. The outside of the TARDIS could be made from a synthetic polymer, which can expand up to five times its normal size. Its exact shape will be controlled by chemicals sent down tiny capillaries, just like blood vessels. The other theoretical possibility would be an amazing material dubbed utility fog. Here, rather than the shape of the TARDIS being built up atom by atom, tiny molecular robots would link together to form a solid mass that could change shape. In the case of the TARDIS, these robots would be controlled by an onboard computer or chameleon circuit. In theory, we should be able to do things like this. There. We would have a door there. Yes, I suppose that's useful. Well, we've got to be able to get in and out. No, I mean being able to change like that. But the most magical property about the TARDIS is the difference between the outside and the inside. Which box is larger? That one. Now which is larger? That one. But it looks smaller. Well, that's because it's further away. Exactly. If you could keep that, exactly that distance away, and have it here, the large one would fit inside a small one. That's silly. But there is another way of explaining how the inside of the TARDIS could be bigger than the outside. Theoretically, it's possible to join two distant points in space via a wormhole or tunnel that provides a shortcut through some higher dimension. The inside of the TARDIS isn't really inside a phone box at all, but in a different part of the galaxy altogether, and so could be as big as it likes. Wormholes can also explain how the TARDIS dematerializes and materializes in different places. Getting around the Doctor's universe is a bit like getting around London. It takes ages to walk anywhere. But by using the underground, with its system of tunnels crisscrossing under the city, we can take shortcuts. It's just the same with wormholes. However, we would need a very weird type of material to make a wormhole. It'd have to have negative mass. Since it has no call to be here, the art lies in the fact that it is here. To make a TARDIS, we'd need the equivalent of the combined mass of all the planets in the solar system. Exquisite. But who knows? Maybe the Time Lords on Gallifrey know something we don't. Time is marching on, but stay with BBC Two. The Daleks are coming. Don't move. Exterminate all human. Exterminate all. An alien who travels through time and space. In a police box. Back to back action with the Doctor. Just tell Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart that I want to see him. A Doctor Who double, Tuesday at 6 on BBC Two. Show him up at once. In the 21st century, will there be such a thing as a scent releasing brassiere? What will the world's population be by 2050? And are we ready for 8 billion mobile phones? What are the rights and wrongs of immunisation, and does it hurt? 
What's the one important change to the highway code that should change the way you drive? What are the tricks you need to take on a premiership defence? And where can you learn them? How many episodes of EastEnders are filmed every year? And what should you do if you want to write one? Do, do, for news, do, for ideas, do. for information, for fun. BBC Online has got all the information you need, whatever the question. What I really need is cooking with Ainsley. <laughs> all right. This is Doctor Who Night on BBC Two. <laughs> Sorry if I scared you, you'll like this bit. The first time the Doctor ever met the Daleks. Quite interesting. Yes. I could have put an end to those Daleks at the very beginning, you know. Still, <laughs> you can't live in the past. I really should get a watch. It must be time for our film. How time flies when you're enjoying yourself. I do hope I've been of some use. <laughs> The scary bit's not over yet. Feature length Paul McGann, Doctor Who, in just a moment here on BBC Two. And there's a new BBC book, special edition video and DVD of some of the Doctor's favourite ventures, all available now. <laughs> 